Welcome to week six. Today I'm going to talk about uh, text and layer styles in Photoshop. Typography in Photoshop uh, is all accessed through the text tool. That shouldn't be anything really startling here. Um, just a couple things with the text tool though. If you roll over and hold down on the text tool, you'll see that you have several different types of text tool. You've got a horizontal type tool, which is the default, vertical, and then a couple of masking tools that are in there. I'm just going to cover the horizontal type tool. I mean, these are pretty straightforward as far as what, what they do. Try these out and see what you like about them. Uh, the regular text tool, though, just a couple of things I want to show you and a couple of, of tricks with using this tool in Adobe. Uh, by default, when you use the text tool, it functions uh, in a text box format. What does that mean? When you single click with text in Photoshop and I type something. Now, I've typed something out here and you can't see what I've typed. There's a couple things happening. I've turned mine back to basic, the interface back to basic here because I like my having my tools up top. The essentials, again, remember you can go window workspace and then reset your, your workspace. Um, up top, all my font options, my typography options. You can't see my text, and this happens quite a bit in Photoshop, because my font color defaulted to this. I have my, my color picker set up for my foreground and background color is white. My font is defaulted into white. Let me just change that color right out of the gate. There we go, color picker. Okay, so what I've done here is I have single clicked with my text tool and dropped a piece of text on the canvas. Don't do that that's not the correct way to create text in Photoshop. What you want to do is click and drag. If I hold down on my mouse and click and drag, now I've drawn a text box the entire width of the canvas. This is a great trick for centering text. If you draw your, your text box the full width of the canvas, and then up top, you can just center your text based on that box and then you snug the text box up to the the bottom of your text this is good practice of creating a text box that will fill the area that you plan to use for centering and for positioning for a, a couple of different reasons don't single click with your t your text in Photoshop because that creates a random text box notice with this piece of text here it's created this is this is useful if you want to create a text box that exactly matches the shape of your text but the thing is when I single click this text box if you see if I single click this one that I've created with just the single click on the canvas the difference between clicking that one and clicking this one this one down here where I've drawn the text box allows me to manipulate the text box that I've drawn the one up top does not notice now that I select it with my text hold there's no box to manipulate here if you single click with Photoshop, it does not let you manipulate that text box, which is a lot harder to position. So first things first, let me dump this layer. Always draw a text box in Photoshop so that you can further manipulate and place this text based on your background for alignment and whatnot. So that's the first thing. Uh, second thing with, with, with text and typography and things of that nature, I'm gonna change my color a little bit so we can see some of the things I'm gonna do here in a minute with layer styles. <clears throat> basics with typography and everyone has heard this at some point I'm going to increase my text box a little bit and blow the size of my font up a little bit some good tricks with the uh, keyboard shortcuts and whatnot with, with text tool if you highlight your text down here and then click the numbers up top here and deselect the box so not just dropping it down with your mouse but clicking inside there so it's highlighted <clears throat> You can then use your arrow keys on your keyboard to increase and decrease your font size on the fly. If you hold down shift and hit up or down, it will increase them large 10, it'd be about 10 font points at a time, which is fast. This is a quick way of adjusting your font, especially if you have a bunch of elements inside your composition. It's a quick way of doing that. The same thing with the font type. I'm gonna reduce my size just a little bit and I'm gonna go in here and I defaulted to Helvetica. If you're on a Mac, always default to Helvetica. In my opinion, it's the the always your go-to font. Uh, if you're on PC, your SOL, maybe you use Arial, which is kind of the cruddy equivalent of that. Uh, regardless, I've got this selected, 
and I've done the same thing up here. Instead of dropping this down, now you can just drop this down and select a specific font. Say if I want to start at the top here of my font choices. Um, that, that, now that text disappeared because my text box was too small. That's a common thing. Uh, you want to make your text box fairly large for starters so you can accommodate larger text pieces. Now that's kind of a crazy font. So what I'm going to do here, same thing. I'm going to single click up top. My text is highlighted and I'm just going to hit down on my keyboard. right? And now I can roll through all the different font formats until I find the one I want. This is a lot faster than single clicking out of that list up top. I can just roll through and figure out a format that I like. Okay, that's some real basic font stuff. Serif versus sans serif. This is a pretty easy thing. I'm going to go down here and duplicate this, this text so we can see serif versus sans serif. The most important thing about font work, which I'm sure everyone's heard at some point. Let me change this back to Helvetica. I'll do Helvetica bold. Okay, these two pieces of text, serif versus sans serif. This is a serif font. The most important thing, in my opinion, is to know which of these two you're using. Serif fonts, these are serifs. The little overhangs of the letters are serifs. The little hooks that you see, little feet. Sans serif, sans just means without, has no serifs. Cleaner font, more of a slab style font, right? There's all kinds of different fonts. There's serifs, there's, there's sans serifs, there's script fonts, there's slab serifs. You can pick into this further, but the two, these are the two main types that we worry about. Long story short, there's no right way to pick a font. In my opinion, and that's what most of this is, is opinion with font work, always go with screen-based stuff. Generally, you're going to be going with sans serif unless you're talking about headlines. Large pieces of text, headlines at the top of a document can be either serif or sans serif. Generally speaking though, generally speaking, sans serif is easier to read on the web than serif as far as body copy goes. That's been established in the past. Generally, serif is easier to read in print. But this, there's some debate on these topics. Most of this is just the look and feel. When we get into typography and fonts, and I don't want to look, wax too poetic about this stuff, serifs are older fonts. Sans serifs are newer fonts by degrees. So generally, the feel that you're trying to impart, the emotional content that you're trying to impart, you use if it's something more traditional, a serif. If it's something newer, a sans serif. Now, again, you can go down the rabbit hole on typography quite a bit. That's all I'm going to talk about as far as the basics of it. What I do want to show in addition is layer styles. Layer styles are some of the most useful things for typography that we have in Photoshop, and it's really a lot of the reason for using Photoshop is layer styles. So let me zoom in a little bit on these, these fonts, and I'll show you what layer styles do. So layer styles, if you select one of these, these font pieces, or the, the top one here, layer styles can be applied to text to make them look more interesting and to stand out. A lot of times this is done for contrast. Let me show you a very classic contrast ad. I'm going to take this piece of typography and I'm going to make the font white, like when it started out. So you can't actually see it on the, on the, the background. Now I'm going to select this layer. and. There's two ways to apply these layer styles. You can either use the FX button at the bottom and scroll through these to find what I'm looking for. I'm gonna look for my drop shadow or stroke for starters. Or my preferred way is in the gray area of your layer, you can double click and that will open up the layer styles palette. Now you're gonna, you're gonna start hurting for room in Photoshop here and this is where a second monitor really comes in handy. Uh, as a professional designer, I would strongly recommend you get a second monitor. Uh, it just makes pulling your palettes over there and still working on things much easier. Uh, you can get a plug-in USB secondary monitor for about $100. That'll plug in almost any laptop. Anyway, so I'm going to situate this over here so we can see both things a little bit more easily. I'm going to pull my canvas over to the left a little. I'm going to add a simple drop shadow. Now, this drop shadow is very heavy, but it gives you the idea of what happened here. Now, one thing just happened. A couple things happened. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn on several of these layer styles. What you can do, this layer styles palette, this section on the left has all the options. This section on the right has the modifications for those options. Now, by default, n the blending options are turned on. They're selected. I've turned on my drop shadow, but the options for my drop shadow are not available. I have to click drop shadow. Then I have the options. There's a lot of options in here. Play with them. They're pretty intuitive. Opacity, the distance of the shadow, 
the spread of the shadow, the size of the shadow. You see how each one of these adjustments really makes a difference in the quality and the professionalism, the look and feel of your layer style. I'm going to add some other ones on here just so you can see what they are. Stroke is obvious. I feel like your stroke is, is a colored uh, line that goes around your font. You can increase or decrease the size of it. With the options over here, you can add strokes to the inside, the outside, or the center of your font, which is really useful to know. All kinds of different stuff. Bevels and embosses, drop shadows, inner shadows, glows, gradient overlays, texture overlays, all kinds of crazy stuff. So there we go. So there's some options here. There's gradient overlays, pattern overlays, all kinds of crazy things you can put on your text. I'm going to leave it like that. Layer styles. So interesting thing with layer styles. There's a bunch of those in there. I want you guys to get in there and play with those. Less is more generally. Usually it's it's considered kind of tacky to combine two more than three layer styles without a purpose. It gets a little heavy for text. If you, if you can't read your text on a background, generally you've done something wrong with contrast to begin with and, and adding a bunch of layer styles is just going to make the waters more muddy. But, so always start with good contrast to begin with. These can really juice up a font. These are really useful for that. Neat things about layer styles though. These are non-destructive. So when you create a layer style palette, these layer styles can be turned on or off selectively on the layer. See if uh, down here, you have this little drop arrow that you can drop down the layer styles to see all of them or selectively apply them. Say I really don't like this pattern or I just wanna see what it looks like with just the bevel and emboss and not the drop shadow or the stroke. You can selectively turn these things on or off and they become activated in your canvas. Even cooler than this, I think, if you really like a set, say you develop, and this used to be a huge problem where you develop a, a set of effects and there's a ton, a ton of settings. You can always double click this, go back into those effects and tweak them. Once you get what you like, you can go to your layer, right click on your layer or control click if you're on a Mac. All kinds of, of right click options show up on here, okay? One of these options is copy layer styles. So what we're gonna do is go down here at the bottom and do copy layer style. Then I can go to my next text layer down, the one down here with no layer styles on it, right click on it, go down to the bottom, paste layer style, check it out. All of those layer styles I've created from the first piece of text now apply to that secondary piece of text. It, it, it literally saves these styles for you. And now I can go in and modify this if I want. If I want this one to be slightly different, I can go in and it's got all the exact same things that I could go in and pick a different pattern. Maybe I pick a different grass for this one. Uh, and then I reduce the size of that so you can see it a little better. Boom, there you go, you've got some variation. So playing with typography in Photoshop and making it look better and fit Again, the idea with this is, is say if this was a lawn care website, then I might use this text specifically. But look at how much the readability is affected of this text. It's not a big deal when we've got a white background. So remember contrast, your basics of design. Anything you add to this text makes it slightly less readable a lot of times. It fuzzes the edges and blurs the edges in the continuity of your text. Be selective with that. But all of that's accessible from your layer styles palette. So there you go. As always, if you have any questions, shoot me an email and I can clarify anything in the set of tools. Have a good one.